like to thank you, thank you for all, all coming to listen to this. And I'd like to just introduce the new Science in School. So Science in School has been around for a while. It's been around since 2006. And it's a magazine for STEM teachers that's funded and published by IRO Forum, which is a col collaboration of eight large intergovernmental research organizations, which are shown on this cover here. And the purpose of Science in School is to support teachers in the delivery of their STEM curricula by connecting them to inspiring cutting edge science and technology in order to foster positive attitudes towards the science that shapes our lives and attract students to careers in these fields. So that's, and um, to that end, we have a number of different article types, but they're all related to STEM teaching and resources for STEM teaching to help teachers, set STEM teachers in inspiring their students. So in 2020, it was decided by the funders to redevelop the journal and we've made some changes. It's decided to go online only because that not only means that we can focus more of our funding on new content, but it also means we can offer content with improved functionality. For example, some of our activities have worksheets that teachers can print out for their classrooms, or we have hyperlinks to resources or videos within the articles to help explain things. Um, it was also we also improve, uh, updated and improved the website, and then decided to focus a little bit more um, on sort of focus the the age range a little bit more, and the focus is now on high schools, so students aged or teachers of students aged 11 and upwards. And in 2021, the the new science in school site was launched. We still cover the full breadth of science topics, and not just um, so uh, of STEM topics, and not just sort of physics, biology, chemistry, and maths, but also engineering. And we have a focus on, on interdisciplinary topics. Sorry, sorry Tamarin, yeah. uh, our colleagues said that uh, we don't see other uh, slides. You don't the see, one you're not see. seeing the presentation. We, we uh, see presentation, but we see only one first slide. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in. So I don't know why that's not working because it was working in the text. I'm about five slides in. So let me let me see if it helps. Oh, now we now we see first of, one. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen instead of sharing yeah. a window and see if that helps. Okay, um, thank you. Sorry for. No, oh, no, thanks for letting me know because it's <laughs> stupid if nothing was turning up. Now we see. Yes. So are you seeing all the slides? Yeah, now? yeah. Now okay. we see. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. These were IRA Forum. These are the, okay, the, nice. the eight intergovernmental research organizations. This was just our mission statement, which I read out. And these are some of the article types we have. And then I was on this slide here. Okay. So these are just a selection of articles from our most recent issue. Um, yeah, we still cover the full breadth of, of scientific topics. Like I said, there was, there's a focus on, on interdisciplinary topics and also topics that show so show students the real world relevance of science. And we have these three article types, the inspire, understand and teach. And I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about each of those. So the understand articles are essentially a science topic and it's information about, about a particular topic. And these are intended to have two purposes, firstly, as inspiration for teachers, that teachers can read them and then have ideas of things to discuss in class or how to mention examples in class that tie the curriculum to the real world. They're also designed to be able to be read in class with students. So we too, do try and make sure that the language is simple enough that students are able to read them as well. And you may have noticed these flags over here. We also support translation into all European languages. So we aren't a, we don't have the funding to officially translate all articles ourselves, but if volunteers get in touch to translate into their own language, we'll provide technical support for that, provide translation tables, get the translations checked, and then of course do the production and the upload. Another very popular article type are the teach articles, and these are teaching materials and classroom activities. A lot of them are hands-on experiments. Some of them are also things like role-playing activities. And I've noticed a lot of people at the conference from the posters and also from some of the talks so far develop activities like this. If any of you would like to share your activities with a, with a wider audience of teachers, then please do get in touch because we're very keen to, to feature some of your fantastic ideas. And the final article type is the Inspire articles, and these are basically articles that don't fit into either of the other two categories, but are still relevant to STEM teaching. 
We feature um, techniques, resources. We also feature education products, projects, as long as they're free to, to use. So if some of you would like to have your projects featured, then again, please get in touch and we can discuss whether they might be suitable for featuring in an Inspire article. And you've probably noticed that one of these articles has a lot of flags next to it. And this is because we also uh, uh, feature all of our content on, the, on our Scientix page. And this particular article was voted by teachers as a favorite in the professionalization of staff category. And Scientix actually then had this particular article professionally translated into all these languages, which was fantastic. So the obvious question is, where do the articles come from? Unfortunately, it doesn't happen exactly like this. So our articles are all written by volunteers. So part of the aim is to provide a platform for the teaching community and the STEM education community more broadly to share some of their ideas with, with all of their teaching colleagues and also to uh, provide a place for scientists who have not really done outreach before but would like to make a start to share their passion and enthusiasm for their topics. And although the articles are mostly written by volunteers, that unfortunately still doesn't mean that they drop from the sky. So we provide full editorial support. Uh, a lot of our authors have never written an article before. English might not be their first language. We provide full support in terms of the structure. We have a format to help make the articles easier for the readers to understand. We provide full language checking and then also help teachers find, for example, suitable images that we have the rights to use that are not copyrighted and things like that. So yeah, if anyone would like to submit an article, please don't be put off if you've never written an article before. We will provide a lot of help for that. And then just to give you a bit of an idea of the process, so we publish five online issues per year, five because it's during term time, so we have a break over the summer holidays and the Christmas holidays when teachers are hopefully relaxing and not doing, not, uh, doing too much work. And the process looks a little bit like this. I just want to mention it briefly just to show that there are a number of steps that we use to try and ensure the quality of the articles. So when we receive a draft, there's first editorial review where we have a look and then give the authors feedback on things like the tone. Is it too complex? Is there enough detail? Is the structure sensible? Is that, are they including too much? And then there's peer review and peers in this case refers to teachers. So we send all of our articles to a teacher to have a look at and get some input on whether they would think it would be helpful in their classroom and what other things they'd like to see. And then for any articles with scientific content as well, then we of course also send it for review to a scientist for fact checking. And finally, just one additional thing that's that's something that's quite important to us is that we really are keen to, to get across the idea that science is for everyone. And it's not always clear how best to do this within our mandate. We have had an article on, for example, inclusive lesson plans. But if anyone in the audience has more ideas on articles that we could feature that would be on this theme and that would help make STEM teaching more inclusive, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, we do try and make sure that for our teaching activities that at least some of them are suitable for use in resource limited settings because we've noticed that there's a huge variation across Europe and some schools have the kinds of lab setups that a lot of universities would be proud of and others have a little prefab building sitting on the sports field so we have to try and make sure that there are activities that everyone can do. We try and ensure that gender neutral language is used throughout and also of course when, when featuring images and also uh, when looking at the scientists we feature, we try and make sure that we feature a diverse range of scientists. So these here featured are some of the authors of some of our articles and they've submitted pictures of themselves working and we try and ensure that that all students have the feeling that science is for them too in that way. But again, I'm very, very much keen to hear ideas on how we can do this better or any ideas people have for articles in this direction. So yeah, thank you all. And as I said, please do get in touch if you have any ideas of either feedback or articles you'd like to feature. On the website, there's information on how to contact us as well as author guidelines. And then, yeah, go and check out some of the, the content we have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tamarine. Uh, I was surprised. And uh, I have one question. Uh, this is a magazine, so this uh, publication, it's uh, online? 
It is now online only. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. This, this means that we can have we can have worksheets and attachments and links and a lot better functionality than when we had to try and get things in a in a printed magazine. Oh.